Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with my friend Todd Wagner. Hello, Rick. Hello, friends. All right, so today we got a good one. We got one, actually, that, um, quite frankly, I get asked a lot. So I'm talking with someone. They're, they're, they're in the midst of something that they shouldn't be in the midst of, and I, I kind of shepherd them with love, and they go, hey, bro, who are you to judge me? Why are you judging me? So the question is, what does the Bible mean when it says, judge not, lest you be judged? Great question. A number of uh, years ago, I did a series called The Most, where just to have a lot of fun, I went through, I talked about the most important verse in the Bible. Uh, I did the most misquoted. I did the most uh, misunderstood. And the most misunderstood verse, I did a number of other mosts. It's kind of a fun thing just to kind of go back and debate. But the most misunderstood verse in the Bible I chose was this particular verse in Matthew chapter 7, where it says, judge not, lest you be judged. So what's that mean? Why is it the most misunderstood? Well, because we often read that out of context. We just take that little phrase. We don't know what Jesus is talking about, what happened before, what happened after. There's a lot of quotes that you can take out of context in your Bible. The Bible, for instance, says um, there is no God in the Bible. But, of course, it says before that the fool has said in his heart there is no God. So what's it say before and around this phrase, judge not lest you be judged, that would tell us it doesn't mean that we shouldn't discriminate or discern right from wrong? Well, one of the ways that we know it doesn't say that there is because of other things that show up in your Bible. It tells you in 2 Timothy chapter 4, for instance, um, to preach the word in season and out of season. Always be ready to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with great patience and instruction. So how can you reprove or rebuke something if there's not a right or a wrong? Uh, we know in Ephesians 4, I think verse 25, it says, speak the truth to one another in love. Well, it means there's error. Okay, um, Matthew 18, it tells us that if uh, we see a brother caught sinning or uh, making decisions that are contrary to the will of God, Matthew 18, 15, that we're to go to that individual. Uh, Galatians 6, verse 1, it says, Brethren, if uh, you see anyone caught in any spiritual trespass, you who are spiritual, in other words, who see things correctly with the mind of God, okay, uh, it says, First, look to yourself so you won't be tempted to be arrogant, prideful, act like you don't have an issue. But it says, reprove such a one in a spirit of gentleness, and by doing so, thus fulfill the law of Christ, okay? By being loving and helping somebody from continuing to do that which hurts them, okay? So there's many places in the Bible, including right there in Matthew 7, because right after Jesus says, judge not, lest you be judged, let me just read you uh, a few other things, and I'll tell you what Jesus was really driving at right there and answer the question, but we're establishing first what it doesn't mean and it can't mean because the Bible, uh, the context of every verse is 66 books, right? Yep. And, and God's not the author of confusion. He's not going to contradict himself. But let's take a look uh, in the book of Matthew, what Jesus says right after this in uh, Matthew 7. You're going to have him tell you a couple of things. First of all, he's going to come back a little bit later and he's going to say to, hey, man, enter the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. That means you've got to judge what road's wide, what road is narrow. And then in verse 15 specifically, it says, beware of the false prophets. <laughs> you got to make a judgment. Is that a real prophet or a false prophet? Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. In other words, you're supposed to discern based on what their lives produce. What following the way of their teaching produces, whether or not they're um, a false prophet or a true prophet. We're supposed to discern if it's a good tree or a bad tree. How? By making decisions about what is good and bad. That's judgment, Rick, right? you got to make a decision. So what's Jesus talking about in Matthew chapter 7? Well, all, all Matthew 7 is part of one of Jesus' most famous um, messages ever. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And what Jesus is doing is he's talking about the kingdom of God. And he's talking about um, what the kingdom of God is going to be like. He's talking about how when you have a relationship with God, it's the blessed life or the good life or the happy life. Uh, you want to go well with you, then you better understand who God is and who you are and that you need him. And there are a group of people that are saying the way you get into the kingdom of God is by a certain level of behavior. And so what Jesus is talking about is, hey, if you think that this is what it takes to get to heaven, you got another thing coming to you. He specifically talks about a group of men called the Pharisees, who were the most religious and zealous men for the law that anybody in that day and age knew. And he says that amazing thing in Matthew 5.20. He says, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And they're like, 
if I'm not more righteous than the Pharisees, who's more righteous than the Pharisees? And that's exactly who Jesus is going after. He's trying to tell these guys, stop measuring other men according to yourself. Because the standard, okay, is in Matthew 5, 48, to be holy as God is holy. And what Jesus said, if you want to judge people according to their works, I'll judge you according to your works. And any man judged as whether or not they're uh, good enough for God to accept them into heaven or into his kingdom based on works is uh, going to be judged by their works. And no man wants to be judged by his works. And so that's why Jesus is saying, hey, listen, I'm going to come and make a way for you. You want to be judged according to uh, grace, my provision for you. But he never tells us not to exhort each other to love and good deeds. In fact, he tells us to be discerning, and he tells us that uh, in, in the Sermon on the Mount that you thought this was righteousness, I'm going to tell you this is righteousness. So Jesus is constantly making distinctions, even within that context, of that we should know what real righteousness and truth looks like. So for somebody to take that verse and say we shouldn't judge what is good and what is bad is just not reading their Bible. They don't understand what Jesus is saying, and they're ignoring the preponderance of Scripture's. And what we know is the sign of wisdom and, and, and being a mature adult is you can discern between good and evil. What we know is that children don't discern. They don't understand the difference between a cliff and a curb, between a rope and a snake. It's, it's a sign of wisdom, maturity, and adult that there is discretion, discernment, the ability to make a judgment. One of the things you said in there in the very beginning that I think is important is when we, when we have a conversation with someone that's living in a way that's not consistent with how God tells us to live, it's in love, in love. Yeah. You know, I'm not just going to come at you. I'm going to do it in love. Well, that's why you judge, okay? If you love somebody, speak the truth in love. That's right. And uh, let me see. You know, tolerance, you know, where people are concerned is a virtue, but tolerance where there is truth is a travesty. Okay, and so we shouldn't tolerate error. It's not loving to tell people that two plus two can equal 17 or 63 or nine. It equals four, okay? And Jesus has never, nothing in the Bible would say that we're to do away with any sort of discernment, discrimination, or judgment. Yeah, I tell people all the time, if truth is truth, the most loving thing I can do is to help you understand truth. Yeah. That's loving. Yeah, and what you don't want to do is say, because you struggle in a way that I don't, God doesn't love you. Right? God demonstrates his love in that while we are sinners, I don't care what your sin expression is, Christ died for us. The key is you've got to acknowledge that as sin. You're in real trouble when you start to say, you're not even going to be able to call what I do sin. All right, God loves my sin. He doesn't love your sin. He loves you. But you've got to acknowledge that your sin needs covering or needs somebody who will deal with it. And the first way you deal with it is by acknowledging it's wrong in the eyes of God and truth and man and then you appeal to him and you trust in him. But boy, it's not loving to be silent. Silence in the midst of sin is a sin. Good stuff. All right, well, we'll put a link to that message that we referenced in the show notes, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick. 